All right, class, we're going to do the R here using this video since things are working better. Um, so I'm going to kind of go over the same notes that we did in class, but now I actually get the chance to show you how that R code works. So we will go through and kind of re-explain it as we go as well. So sort of first just looking at our two-dimensional plots in our code. So the first thing we're going to do is import our data set into R. So now I should hopefully be able to do that. It was working fine earlier. So if we click this import data set from CSV, this is where I was trying to get earlier. I can browse to find where I've saved my file. And so mine's in my subfolders that I have here. So for my data set, I'm going to choose the serial R one. How it's named down here is how the name is going to come into R. So if you ever want to change the name of the data set, you can do it right there. It defaults to believing that the first row is the names. So you can kind of see how they look like the titles of our variables there as well. So it's going to bring in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different columns when I do this. So if I actually go ahead and click the little import button down here, that's going to bring in my data set and show it to me right here as well. By looking at the data set, you can see how each of the columns is named in case you need to call for it later. Again, emphasizing that R is case sensitive. So if I wanted serial, notice that that's a capital C. Or if I want shelf, it's a capital S. So I do need to be careful and cognizant of that when I'm running code in R. Now we can actually get that scatter plot matrix that we were looking at. So again, first as a reminder, what this pairs is going to do is create a scatter plot for each pair of variables that I put through here. The three variables that I chose were sugar, fat, and sodium. Those correspond to my standardized ones where we took into account dividing by that serving size. So I'm not using this sugar in grams, I'm using that sugar that's been standardized that I'm working with. Same thing then for fat and sodium. Here I'm specifying the name of the data set, so, so that's, that's the exact name of my data set. I gotta make sure that matches perfectly. So when I run just that line of code, we'll see that scatter plot matrix that we had. Now again, for this next line of code, talking through first what this stuff means. So the core just means for the correlations that it's trying to calculate, the name of the data set that you want. And when I have these square brackets, it's going to be looking at things from a matrix. It's always row, comma, columns. So the fact that I did not specify any rows means I'm going to take all of the rows and I'm only going to take columns 8 through 10. So if we go back and look at our data set here and count, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oops, sorry, oops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 would be the sugar, 9 would be the fat, and 10 would be the sodium. So that's why I'm pulling off just those three columns, but for all rows, since I did not specify what rows. So now when I run that code, we get that little correlation matrix down here that we had in our notes as well. Down here, which was the same as the one that we got in SAS. Now going on to those three-dimensional plots, this is going to make more sense now that we can actually run the code as we go. So again, I'm using the same data set. The first thing I'm going to do is just create a scatter plot of fat versus sugar. I'm going to have my data set loaded already, so I don't have to do that again since I already have that entered. Looking here again at the actual code, when I look here, this is going to tell me the data set dollar sign, and then the variable that I want to pull off. So whenever we're doing this, we got to make sure we specify the data set and the variable at the same time. So my X is going to be sugar, my Y is going to be fat. Now when it came to those labels, this X label that we create is what's going to go down here as the label, our 
for Y label is what's going to go over here for that one. In the title, again, if you use this backslash N, it's basically just going to go on to the next line is what it's doing there. So I'm looking at fat versus sugar, but then I also mentioned that each one is adjusted for serving size. Then this next part of that panel first, grid, is putting these grid lines that you see on our graph. We're using light gray and dotted lines. So this again, the color you want it to be, and then the line type that you want. So now if I actually run that in R, when I run this first, or this code, this is gonna give me that scatter plot that we looked at. So just the one of sugar and fat. Now, if I were to move on to the next part of our code where we're trying to actually take into account that third variable, the first parts of my code here are exactly the same. So I'm doing that same original scatter plot, same title, same grid lines and everything. The only thing I've added is this type equals n. And this n is going to basically tell me not to actually do the plot yet. So if we were to run just that line of code, I want you to see what that looks like. So it's started creating the graph, but notice there's no points on it yet. So it's starting the graph, it has the right bounds and everything for us, has the labels and everything. It's just not actually plotted the data yet. The next part that we're doing is now actually figuring out how we're gonna plot the points also using a third variable. And for our third variable, we're going to be using shelf is that third variable that we're going to be taking into account here. So what I'm going to do is have those points be represented by some type of character to help me figure out which shelf is which. So the things I'm going to do is I'm defining two different things for shelf. I'm having them be different colors as well as different symbols. The colors I chose here are black, red, dark, green, and blue. You could choose other colors. I'm going to do each of those 10 times. And let's actually run that first so you can actually see what that looks like. So when I run just this line of code, over here I get this thing that says shelf color. And you can see that it's 40 things, 1 to 40, and it's black, 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 and it's going to do that 10 times, then it's going to do red 10 times, then dark green 10 times, then blue 10 times. Now why do I actually can put it in that order? Notice that my data set is already sorted by shelf, and that there were 10 of each of them. So that's why it works, because I have this nice already organized data set by shelf. I have the same number of each observation, so that makes it pretty easy for me to do that. That's the same reason why me doing this for this symbol is going to work as well. For a symbol, I'm going to represent things by a 1, 2, 3, or 4. Here that's going to work out nice because that's actually the same thing as shelf. I'm going to do that 10 times as well for each. So this is going to have 10 ones followed by 10 twos, if you ever want to see what it looks like, down here I could just type that shelf.symbol and have it print out so I can see exactly what's in it since I'm only given a limited version of it up here. So I can see exactly what's in it. So now I have different colors I can use for my symbols. I also have the different plotting characters ready to go. So now we're going to actually put the points on our graph. So if we look at our points, notice that we're starting again with just defining my variables. So sugar is my X, fat is my Y. PCH is going to ask me what plotting character to use, and I'm using that thing called shelf.symbol, which is different depending upon the shelf that they're on. So I'm going to get four different plotting characters, one for each shelf. For color, I'm using that shelf.color which again has the four different color options up here, 
one for each shelf. Size I'm making, you don't have to actually define size, you would get something um, as well here. Here I'm making them, the higher the shelf, the larger the, the character is actually going to be for us there. So now if we were to run just that code, I now get my points on here where I have things that are different plotting characters and those different colors of black, red, dark green, and blue. So we have those different colors. The last thing I need here for my graph is the actual legend to tell you well, which shelf is represented by which of our characters that we have here. So in the legend, I'm telling you where to put my legend using an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So at X of 0.5 and Y of 0.08. So this is where it's gonna start putting my legend for me. I'm doing it there because there's a nice amount of clear space for me to do that. I'm giving things a title. I'm putting those numbers one through four in it since that's actually what my shelves are. BTY, again, is just a box type, so it's not gonna put a box around my legend. And for the colors, I'm having the colors match exactly what they were up here in the exact same order to make sure that things match up. For the plotting characters, they were also the one, two, three, and four that we used. And their sizes, looking back at my function of where I created that size, first one's gonna be 1.3, 1.6, I'm just gonna add 0.3 each time as it goes up to one, two, three, and four. So now if I run my legend code, I get this over here. Again, there's just no box around it. That's what that box type of none would actually mean. So hopefully now this makes more sense now that you've got to see the code attached to it and actually ran for us. I will of course Continue to try to figure out why things do not like to cooperate as well in Zoom um, as when I'm out of it because it's, it's very interesting that I can do whatever I want and draw out here and you see it right away, um, but it's not working that well while I'm in Zoom. So I'm continuing to investigate why that is. Um, so thank you for all your understanding as we're trying to, to work through this together. But please do not hesitate to continue to reach out with questions if something is still not making sense. Um, again, also knowing that coding is newer to some of us more than others, so please continue to reach out with questions if you have them.